welcome to my channel. I am really glad you're here today because I am excited to share some beautiful, easy techniques that you can use to create scenery cards. Now the stamp set that I'm going to be using on today's card is called Hills of Tuscany. This is a new stamp set from Stampin' Up. I knew right away I had to have it. And my head has just been spinning with the different ways that I wanna create the background with the sky and the ground. So I wanted to share this with you too so you can try these techniques at home because they will work with so many different stamps. So without further ado, let's start stamping. This is the mini catalog that the Hills of Tuscany is currently in, page 20. It is such a fun stamp set to me. This is, this is very much a Tina stamp set. And I just, I'm so excited to play with this. I have not played with this stamp set yet. I've only used the sentiment, which I believe I used on cards in my last video. So I am excited to play. So let me show you the stamp set. It's photopolymer. This makes the sky with the clouds. Uh, you can do this for like sky, ground, like there's a lot you can do. Clouds. Okay, enough chatter. Let me just start playing and I am going to um, ink my stamps first. Oh, I am using our watercolor cardstock, which comes in a package measured five by seven. So I cut it at three and a half, so I can get two panels per piece and stretch it out. So I have my block, and I actually bought a new set of our water painters because I have used mine so, so much that the uh, tips are starting to bend. So this comes all three in a set. So you've got your wide flat brush and then you have these ones. So this is your smaller brush and then your your bigger wide brush. So I'm just gonna set those aside because I'm probably gonna use them. All right, so I'm going to start, move my coffee here. I'm gonna start with this sky stamp. And I'm going to use my mat underneath. I'm going to put a piece of computer paper under there so I don't get ink all over my mat, which I tend to do. So I'm going to use Azure Afternoon. I'm going to tap that right on top. And I'm bringing in my Stampin' Spritzer and I'm going to spritz my watercolor cardstock just lightly. I'm also going to spritz my stamp. And I'm just gonna start right at the top. And I'm just gonna hold it down just for a few seconds just to let that ink really kind of get on that paper and lift it straight up. Oh my gosh, that's gonna look so gorgeous. So I've just wiped off my stamp and I'm gonna repeat this. I'm going to use these images to stamp the hills and for that I'm going to use Old Olive. I'm going to spritz my paper again because some of that has dried. Just a bit. Spritz my stamp and I'm going to start down at the bottom and work my way up. I've wiped my stamp off again with ink. And I'm going to go up a little higher this time and overlap the two. Now I'm using the smaller image and I'm going to stamp this time with Mossy Metal. I'm going to stamp right over top here. And repeat that. I'm gonna stamp that right down here. And I'm actually going to do that again. And because there's, you know, a good amount of water on there, I'm not going to miss this time. I'm just going to stamp it directly on. 
Now I'm going to use these images to just go on top of the hills that I just made. And I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use shaded spruce for that. Pull in a few different colors. And I'm not going to mist this time. Put the longer of the two on first. I'm going to stamp that right here. And then we'll do it again here. I love how this is starting to look like little bushes, a hedge, if you will. Now I'm going to stamp the sunshine. I'm going to use crushed curry for that. Ink that up. I'm going to mist my paper again. Just keep it lightly damp. I'm going to mist my sun. And I'm actually going to put my sun right here. Okay, now I'm going to take my water painter and I'm just going to squeeze the barrel until the water comes out. And I'm just going to move that ink around. Okay, and I'm stamping my house with sweet sorbet and I'm not misting it with water because I don't want to lose the um, the windows in that image. For the roof, I'm going to use copper clay. So the sample that they have in the catalog is, I believe they're the same color, but I want to do the copper clay. Ink that up. No, I haven't lined this up, but it looks like it's pretty straightforward, except I have a camera right beneath my nose. I've decided I don't want my windows on the house to be the same color as the background. So I'm going to pull in my gray granite ink pad. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of ink just on the edge of the ink pad and just color in those windows. this gray I'm just gonna pick a little bit up on my brush and just add a little bit beneath the house and actually that gives me an idea I'm actually gonna put some more gray on this block pick this up I'm gonna make like a little path happens when you start playing you start getting all kinds of ideas for the trees I'm bringing back my mossy meadow inking it up and I am going to miss this I'm gonna stamp one right here right next to the house and if I need to, I can go back on top after it's dry and re-stamp it. Okay. Do it again. I'm gonna stamp some over here. Okay, so this stamp has the five trees on it and there's another stamp that has three trees. So I'm going to use the three trees next. This is so much fun. And you know it, it's going to go right here. But I'm going to pull it down just a bit. Okay, I'm going to dry that. Thing that is not in this stamp set that um, I want to use on this card are birds. So I've just pulled out beside me, there's these three birds and then the stamp set on the ocean where I've got a whole flock of them. I'm just going to use the three. So always look at your stamp sets and see how you can combine them. And I'm going to stamp that with um, my black memento. And I'm going to stamp them right here. 
All right, let's put this card together. So I'm going to cut this at three and three quarters by five and a quarter. Before I put that on the card, I'm gonna sponge around the edges. So for the top, I'm going to use the Azure Afternoon and for the bottom, I think I might do Old Olive. letting some of that blue ink flow in inside the card a little bit as well it is the same color as the sky maybe I'll pull a little bit over here now my old olive I think we'll use mossy meadow and just use that sweet sorbet. And I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment directly on this because I wasn't sure if I was going to do a banner and I'm not going to. I'm just going to grab my black memento. If it doesn't turn out, then I can put a banner on top, but we're just gonna stamp it right here. Oh my goodness, isn't that nice? All right, let's get this onto a card. I'm not sure what color card base to use, and this was left over for an, from another card. This is the um, seafoam green, but you see how with that water, I've kind of got that light green going on with the uh, old olive in the water, and I think that looks really, really nice. So that's what I'm going to do. So there's my first card done. I'm not going to add any ribbon or any embellishments. I'm just going to keep it just the way it is. And also, just so you know, this card base is bigger than our regular size card bases we generally use. This measures four and a quarter by five and three quarters. For the second card, I'm going to use that second piece of watercolor cardstock. And then the last card, I'm going to use our regular basic white cardstock. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in one of our clear blocks. And I'm going to bring in the crushed curry. And I'm just going to stamp it right on the block. Then I'm going to bring in the Azure Afternoon, and I'm going to I'm going to just take this edge, and I'm just going to tap it, kind of right around here. But I don't want to go right into that yellow because I'm going to add water, and then those colors can mix in together. Okay, and crumb cake. Same thing. I'm being careful not to get my ink pad into that blue because I don't want it to contaminate the ink pad. Bring in my water spritzer. Missed it really well. Missed the paper as well. Okay. And stamp it down. And just let it sit for a few minutes so that it can really absorb into that watercolor cardstock. All right, now I'm going to take my water painter and just pull that color in. I have my paper towel handy. I'm just going to pull it in. Now you can leave this to dry on its own. I'm gonna sap it with the heat tool. Next up, I'm going to stamp my house. And I'm gonna stick with the same colors on all the cards here. So I'm gonna pull in the sweet sorbet. And 
And this time I want to use basic gray for the roof. I just don't want that darker, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to stamp my hills, but this time instead of green, I'm going to use pecan pie. And I'm not misting with water. My mossy meadow. Jump right on top. I'm going to stamp this up here as well. Now I'm using the smaller one. Same thing, mossy meadow. And I'm going to stamp a little bit here. And a little bit up here. Sweet sorbet again for the flowers. My crushed curry in the sun. And I'm going to stamp it right here. Okay, trees next. I'm going to stick with the mossy meadow and pull in my early espresso marker like I, I did before. And I'm going to take my water painter. I'm going to add a little bit of that mossy metal in here. I'm just kind of wiggling it a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the water painter. I'm going to squeeze some more water out. I'm just going to tap the water on here just to make that ink bleed just a bit, just to give it more of kind of a watercolory look. I'm going to clean my water painter and I'm also going to just pull that ink and water in the center of my sun. Now I actually want that rooftop to be a darker rooftop so I'm going to take my water painter again and I'm just going to work that in. My basic gray in. I'm gonna pick some up from the ink pad and work that in until I'm happy with it. Squeeze the barrel again of my water painter, get some water out, and I'm just going to pull some of this green into the picture. So it's just picking up the green shrubs that I've already stamped down. Same thing, do it up by the trees, pull some of that green down. Bring that brown down, I know it's pulling some of that red, but that's okay. And this is going to get trimmed anyways. Just go a little bit on the house. Just let that water a very little bit of water on my brush. I don't want to lose all the shading of the house. I'm going to use the same bird image from the Beside Me stamp set. I am going to cut this out and I do believe I'm going to use my perennial postage and look at that. It just fits. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out on my die cutting machine and be right back. I want to take my black memento ink and my small blending brush and I'm just going to go around the edge. Just 
time to finish this card. So this die cut is four and a half by three and a quarter. So I'm going to cut four, four and three quarters by three and a half. So we'll do three and a half by four and three quarters. So that's a quarter of an inch bigger than this to layer that on. And I'm going to pop that on with dimensionals. Looking through my Meandering Meadows Designer Series paper, and I think both of these would work really well behind this. Um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with that one. Okay, so I'm going to trim that down. So this is going to measure four and a quarter by five and a half, and it's going to cover the entire front of the card. Okay, I'm going to bring in some gold twine and wrap this around and tie a bow. scrap piece of basic white. I'm going to stamp wishing you peace. And I'm going to trim that into a banner and put it on my card. The last card that I'm going to share is an oldie but a goodie with this technique. It's the ink pads direct to paper technique. So I'm going to start with the crushed curry. I'm sticking with all the same colors I've been using. My basic white, this is not watercolor cardstock, basic white measures three and three quarters by five. So all I'm going to do is swipe on my crushed curry, not quite half all the way down. Then I'm going to take my Azure Afternoon, do the same thing using just the edge of this ink pad. Take my crumb cake, go across, and then I'm going to use my old olive. Put a little bit of adhesive behind this paper just to keep it in place, lined up on my grid paper. Then I'm going to put my post-it note, also using the grid marks to make sure it's straight. I'm going to take the Azure Afternoon and I'm going to use my blending brush. I'm just going to go on the sides just like so, just adding a little bit. In the hills of Tuscany, we're going to add some hills. Notice I saved the quickest, easiest for last. <laughs> but I wanted to show you there's so many different ways you can use this stamp set. Okay, I am just going to stamp Old Olive right here. And a little bit on the end. My house is going to go right here so I don't want to cover up the center. Bringing in this portion here I'm going to stamp with my um, I'm going to stamp with my old olive directly on top. And we're going to turn it this way just a bit. Again stamping with my sweet sorbet. I'm stamping the base of the house now. I'm going to stamp the rooftop with Pebbled Path. Off just a little bit. So I'm going to take my blender pen, pick up some of this ink, and just fill in the gap. I'm going to make that a little bit darker. Bring in some pool party for the windows. Okay. 
mossy meadow and my three trees and my early espresso marker again. I'm gonna stamp them right about here. Now I'm doing the same thing with the five trees. And you'll see you get an entirely different look on the basic white smooth cardstock versus the water color cardstock, but you get such beautiful images. Okay, now I need to pull in some green because there's a little bit of a dip here. So I'm just going to take my blender pen, just tap it into my mossy metal and I'm just going to go across and pull some of that down. In my crushed curry and my sun, I'm gonna stamp it right here. My sweet sorbet for my little flowers. Now the magic, I'm going to remove this mat. And you can see I missed a little bit in this gap here. So I'm gonna swipe some more blue down. So I've just, let's make sure we get this lined up again. Okay, grab my blue ink pad again and just swipe it across. Whoops, oh, look what I did. Mm. All right, we'll fix it. Don't worry, be happy. Okay. My ink pad got stuck on the paper. That's what happened there. So, how are we gonna fix that, you're asking me? Well, I'm going to pull in some shaded spruce and I'm just gonna swipe that across, get some different colors in here. I'm gonna spin this around and I'm gonna take my blue and pull it down further, okay? And again, just use the edge of my ink pad. I always say don't sweat the small stuff, it can be fixed. I'm taking my old olive, I'm gonna add some more old olive down here. I'm gonna go right over that crumb cake because it got pretty much hidden anyways. And I'm gonna take my mossy meadow and a blending brush and I'm gonna go around the edges down here. I'm gonna pull in my ocean front and I'm going to use this stamp right here. And I'm going to stamp this with my shaded spruce. Those blotchy bits are working right into the picture. And you can still see some crumb cake, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my wild wheat and I'm just going to go around this portion here. Let's grab my birds because I do love the birds on this um, with this stamp set. Okay, so I'm putting my picture on a piece of basic, basic white that measures four by five and a quarter. And I'm using a basic black card base for this card as well. I love this card. I love the other cards, but this is my favorite. And I'm just going to stamp hello on this. mishap that I had with the ink pad. Look how nice it still turned out. You can still see the crumb cake, the different shades of green. I still have that um, nice swiping look. Really, really pleased with that card. It's 
So as you can see, you get such different uh, looks to your cards depending on, you know, the cardstock that you're using, the technique if you're using water versus ink direct to paper, and it is just so much fun to play. And this is all one stamp set, except for the birds, <laughs> which is from that Beside Me stamp set. But I just love this set. So much fun to play with. And these background techniques that I showed you are just so much fun to use with other stamp sets as well. So I hope you got a lot of inspiration today. I really appreciate you watching. Please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you know every time I upload a new video.